All right, so the vehicle that we had in the shop today was a 2011 Jeep Wrangler. Uh, this is a four-door model. It really doesn't matter if it's two or four, but I'm being very specific. Uh, I went ahead and I had to replace the right front, which is the passenger side front window motor. I'm going to show you step by step how to remove the door panel and how to gain access to and how to replace that window motor. It's pretty cut and dry. It's not as hard as it is on some models. Uh, it's kind of nice how they uh, located the motor because uh, I've done other videos on other cars and some of them I got to take a lot of stuff apart and it takes a lengthy little bit of time and, and it kind of increases the uh, job skill level for most people so some of them don't want to tackle it. I personally believe this is something you can tackle fairly easy. So you sit there, you get your little notepad at, you, you get your pen, you take your little notes. And if you need to replay this over and over, feel free to. So just follow the steps one by one, and I'll lead you all the way to the end on how to replace this item. So you go ahead and sit there. I'm about to get my hands dirty for you. Now in order to get this door panel off, We've got a total of five fasteners. Uh, we've got a T30 up in here in the pocket where the door handle is. We've also got two Phillips screws in this recess here on the grab handle. And we got two along the bottom storage compartment. Now we're gonna go ahead and go get these Phillips screws out. And then lastly, our T30. We're getting that out as well. All right, now we've got the external fasteners off. Now it's also held in place with some plastic fasteners. Uh, little Christmas tree type styles that are on the back side of the panel that snap into certain plastic housings as well. And then along the top edge, it does kind of sit over the uh, lip a little bit. So what we do is we start at the bottom corner, usually around the pocket, because there's no plastic fasteners there, so we do got a little movement we put our hand our hand up under the door panel and we start working our way around and then snapping now you may think it might be tight feel like you're going to break it but if you've already got all the fasteners i spoke of you should be fine just take your time working your way up and as we get up we're going to kind of lean it outward to clear that handle and then we're going to try to lift it upward to clear that little loop that little hook up here or ledge and then we got the one connector on the back for the power locks unplug that and if you look on the back side like I was showing you, you've got your plastic fasteners here, here. you got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one of them actually stayed on the door, which that happens from time to time. Uh, just take them off and seat it back on the door panel. Now what I want to do is take a second here to explain about the connector. Uh, a lot of times on a lot of the repair videos or any kind of repairs, people come in and I could not get the connector loose. So, we're just going to focus in on this one. This is what I call the two-stage lock. You've got a red piece right here, and as well as the piece that you need to squeeze to release it. Now, on this one, this lock is already in the unlocked position. Uh, sometimes this red piece will be slid over to where you can't quite see it except for the raised lip, and then another piece of red will protrude, so it will be actually be firmly seated over here. This one's actually unlocked. Uh, I can't get it to lock for nothing to show you what lock would be like, but this is how it was when I removed the door panel. So this is in the unlocked position. Now, if it was locked, you would just get you a screwdriver or something and pry it over till it looks like it does now. Now to release it with the secondary lock, we've got to squeeze in on the bottom here and then pull down. Now we've got our connector off. Otherwise, basically, that's all there is to it. All right, so now all we got to do is work on getting the window motor off. Now it's held in place with three 10 millimeter bolts. They've also got accommodation for a Phillips screwdriver, a larger head if you want to go that route. So we'll go ahead and back it out. All right. So you got that loose. We're going to work on trying to get this off. Now it's got to have a little bit of tension because of the glass where it's at. So I'm going to just put my hand up here to hold it. And then what we're going to do in the meantime. We're going to go ahead and get our next one. As you see, it just slid right out. Had a little bit of tension, so it slid up a little bit to the side and pulled out. We don't have any more problems in there. 
we'll put the new one on, we'll rig it until we finally get it right, and then we might have to rotate it to get it perfectly lined up. All right, so at this point, we'll go ahead and put the new motor on. Can't have new bolts for some reason. Don't know why, but we'll use them. What we do is we need to go ahead and line it up. Because there's actually yeah, little teeth on here. So it's not a, there's a few different positions it can go on. So it's the same way with that regulator spool. You just got to kind of line it up until you find a spot. And once it finally does go in, just rotate it to where the bolts all will line up. And then we'll just run our new bolts up in here, 10 millimeters. Start getting them started one at a time so we got all three of them lined up, feel good about it, and then we'll tighten it up. And all we got to do is plug in our connector again, and then all we got to do is just give it a good tug to make sure it's fully seated. Now all we'll do is put the door panel on. Now we're on to putting the door panel on. We do have that one connector for the power lock, so we'll go ahead and plug that in. And what we got to do is we got to work it over the top edge first. A little groove right here in the door panel that has to go down first. Kind of get it in the basic position of where it's going to end up at. Get it down in there. We feel pretty good about it. There we go. Now we'll start working it down over the handle. Now what we can do, we can actually start feeling that the snaps are going to start lining up. We'll give it a couple good hits in the corners. Kind of work your way around. Make sure it's fully seated. Now all we got to do is worry about the two Phillips screws here and here, as well as the two around the pocket and the T30 torques. Once we put those in, we'll go ahead and check the wind operation and we'll be done with this. So as you saw in the video, wind and motor, it's on the outside of the door, technically. Uh, you can't see the regulator, but you see the wind and motor. Three bolts. Wow. Why don't they do this on all the cars? Uh, for whatever reason, that's how it is on the Wrangler. Uh, I enjoyed doing it because it was pretty cut and dry. I kind of wish they were all that way. Luckily, these days, we don't have a lot of wind to regulator problems like we used to. So, uh, this motor was actually kind of sticking at times. It would slowly start going and then stop. Uh, so, we had already diagnosed it as being the wind motor. So, we put it on and verified it. It did take care of it. So, I wish they were all that way. Uh, they're not so if you got a wrangler and you had to do it lucky you it won't take you too long to do it um, I always appreciate you guys watching these videos. I try to spit out as many as I can some pertaining to different vehicles It's been a while since I've done some wranglers, so I've been getting kind of hot and heavy on them for you Jeep guys I base this off of comments people give me suggestions So I found my way and then when it comes time I try to do what I can to not forget about you guys so uh, leave any suggestions, comments. I try to respond back in a timely manner. One thing I'd love for you to do is leave me any thumbs up, thumbs down. So that, that's your way of critiquing how I'm doing. Uh, it's kind of a lets me know if I'm doing things right or wrong or things I need to improve on. Also, make sure you subscribe. Subscribing helps grow my numbers. Uh, makes me look like uh, I'm doing something productive. Also, it lets you know when new videos come out because sometimes a video might come out in the near future might pertain to something that you own uh, or you might future in the future you might own. So definitely subscribe so you'll get notified. And also don't forget to check out Facebook. We do have a Facebook page. The link is on the main channel. You can also look up Motor City Mechanic. You'll find me there as well. Definitely like and share any of the videos or posts that we put on there and feel free to leave anything as well. So as always guys and gals, I appreciate you watching and always stay tuned for more because I'm not stopping anytime soon.